Now, Nancy, in addition to her other tasks and being president of the American Society of Clinical Oncology this year, is also on the senior advisory board to this organization from the very beginning and has helped form this organization in terms of the grant recipients and the whole scientific direction. Nancy Davidson. Let me tell you what that last thing is. What a great job to be on the scientific advisory board for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation because you get to see the best of everything um, and, and be able to help enable it. It's a terrific opportunity. Thank you so much for helping us all do that. I will thank all of you for that. I'm a medical oncologist. Um, I work at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. I direct the breast cancer program. And Laura has already told you about the thing that really resonates with me, which is the concept of targeted therapy. I um, work both in the laboratory and in the clinic. And I'm really interested in how you can take observations in the laboratory and bring them into the clinic, and how we can take our understanding about breast cancer biology, genetics, all the new things that we're learning, to identify pathways that have gone awry in breast cancer, and then think about how you might target them very specifically. Now, my big love um, is one that we've talked about in the past here, which has to do with targeting types of, types of pathways. And I actually am particularly interested in that in younger women and premenopausal women. So things that have to do with tamoxifen, suppressing ovaries, all those kinds of things. But for today, our topic, as you know, is angiogenesis. And, and so that's another example of targeted therapy, thinking about how to target this process of new blood vessel formation. And my particular interest in this came because I worked with many, 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 many colleagues in this room um, and across the country um, in the context of large clinical trials through what are called the National Cancer Institute Cooperative Groups. So these are funded by the National Cancer Institute at a very minimal funding level, I might tell you right now. That's another area where you could really help us out. Um, and these groups have been responsible for conducting many of the hugely influential clinical trials that have affected how I practice breast cancer every day. This is what I use to counsel patients about what the best therapy might be for them. Um, because that therapy is imperfect, we're all still very much engaged in this clinical trials process um, because we want to be able to continue to improve our therapies. So this discussion we had yesterday was actually about one of these trials, um, a trial that was done through these cooperative groups. Um, and actually, George was hugely influential as was our colleague Kathy Miller who led the trial and who's in the audience today. Um, this was a trial that took one of these anti-angiogenesis drugs, the drug called Bevacizumab or Avastin. And you know this is an antibody that binds to one of what, these critical blood vessel stimulating proteins. So we took this drug, which had been shown to be active in the laboratory, as you heard, um, had been shown to be active by itself a little bit in women who have advanced breast cancer. And we asked what would happen if we would combine it with a common chemotherapy, the drug Taxol or Paclitaxol, um, for women who had new metastatic breast cancer that was going to require chemotherapy. So this was a trial that looked at chemotherapy by itself versus chemotherapy with the Avastin. And what we learned is that if you did that, you could double the length of time that a patient would be free of breast cancer growth with the use of the combination therapy. So she had less trouble with breast cancer growth using the two drugs as opposed to the one. And importantly, we learned that you could do this in a safe fashion, that the side effects that we look for, and actually how the patients themselves assessed how they felt, that adding the Avastin did not add any extra side effects, but it in fact improved her outcome with breast cancer, improved this what we call progression-free survival. So this is a really important message for us because it establishes the proof of principle for the science that Judah reminded us that he started back in 1970, what, Judah? I've forgotten. Thank you. Um, that we've now moved this forward in breast cancer. We've shown that this is a, a viable concept, um, one that's worthy of further study. And, and that work is going to continue through a variety of venues, including, I think, by many BCRF grantees who are in the audience today. So again, thanks for your support for this.